welcome to Microsoft Build 2021, and you are joining Hong Kong Local Connection session right now. I'm EJ, Developer Audience Product Marketing Manager, and... Yeah, it's Tiffany, Data AI Guy Product Marketing Manager. The objective of Hong Kong Local Connection session is meant to give you all an open platform to learn and connect with your developer peers and our local experts. So I hope that there's a lot of great takeaways for you guys during this one hour virtual session. 希望大家在這個Local Today we have a jam-packed agenda with amazing lineup of guest speakers to join us and share technical sharings with best practices to inspire you with new insights on how technology can empower you. 今日我們這一個鐘的session就非常豐富的 so without further ado, I would like to invite Kali to kick us off with a short welcome remark followed up by a very special guest speaker. You'll find out very soon. Kali, the time is yours. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Bill Hong Kong Local Connection. AI, big data, and cloud computing, ABC, are becoming the technology mainstream Organizations are leveraging ABC for their digital transformations for better business resilience and competitive advantages in new normal. As our CEO said, two years of digital transformations all happened in two months' time. Developer, you are the backbone of companies' digital transformation. It's important to continue upskill and reskill ourselves. Today's Hong Kong Connections is to strengthen our network of developers in Hong Kong, as well as to celebrate your achievement. We have four key focus areas. The first one, expand virtual training topics. For example, DevOps with kick AI analytics in apps. Three certifications, more dynamic Microsoft learn experience, digital skilling with and for the job seekers. Now I'm excited to invite our special guest, Harry Sham. It's really our honor with him to share his wisdom, how we can foster a stronger developer communities in Hong Kong. Harry, over to you. Hello, welcome to Microsoft Build and this very special Hong Kong local event. As someone who has spent a career exploring the limits of computing, I remain a developer at my heart. So Build has always been one of the most interesting Microsoft events for me. Let me start by talking about the technology trends, opportunities that we have to use our skills to have an impact with the technology. Today, computer science is making fundamental changes in our society with the massive distributed computing power of the cloud advanced data collection and the processing capabilities driven by the devices, sensors, and the software, plus machine learning capabilities to make sense of and act on the inside from the data. Today's realities are ever closer to the science fiction dreams of my youth, for example. AI brings the promise of machine speech, vision, recognition, and the reasoning that have the potential to enhance human capabilities and to create a better future for everyone. Another example is blockchain. It's a technology that we recently hear a lot about, especially in terms of cryptocurrency. But it's so much more than that. Blockchain creates a secure, distributed, shared truth. The potential in financial services, supply chain, legal and real estate, government, is so extraordinary that even the fiercest of competitors are working with each other in this shared database implementations. Because the more distributed they are, the more authentic they become. And there is my favorite, quantum computing, that Microsoft has been working hard on for many years. Despite all the advances we have made in computing, some problems require longer than the lifetime of the universe to solve using 
the fastest classic digital computers. A good example is the RSA 2048. But imagine you know, someday we will have the quantum computers. The future we can create will be so massively different. For example, challenges like nitrogen fixation could be solved. So there will be cheap fertilizers everywhere. Another example is the carbon capture. You know, that could be achieved so that we can mitigate global climate change. Material science advances could also yield lossless power lines, better batteries, and even newer and the smart materials. And the machine learning will also be changed with the advancements of quantum computing. So the opportunities abound. But even without quantum's full fruition, the connected intelligent cloud and edge paradigm opportunities we have today are already huge. So across manufacturing with connected and intelligent factories and the industrial operations, it's a good example. And also in retail with e-commerce, O2O models and the innovative experiences, as well as distribution centers and the deliveries, all those things are being fundamental changes with the cloud. In real estate, government, healthcare, and agriculture, and of course in education, in nearly every industry and the sector of society, we can see the opportunities of technology. What happened recently with coronavirus pandemic globally has made it clearer than ever. In fact, Hong Kong is naturally ahead of the world in seeing and planning for these opportunities. Hong Kong's digital strategy strives to build Hong Kong into a world-class smart city. With investments and the policies across mobility, economy, lifestyle, government, and the talent, all infused with a deep commitment to climate and the culture. For example, from 2017 to 19, the Hong Kong government introduced the policies and allocated almost 13 billion US dollars for innovation and the technology. A number of different measures and the grants for I and T support ongoing projects, particularly in smart city development and in research and development for new technology and innovation. I'm very happy to see increased investment in 20 to 21, including the strong support for the development of two research clusters in healthcare technology and in robotics and AI. Also, the support includes for phase two of Science Park expansion program. So while we are here at the build, experience all the things becoming available for Microsoft developers, our Hong Kong developers can be especially excited because the opportunities and the commitments here are going to, be, are going to significantly shape the future. And that brings me to our approach of collaboration and openness. Collaboration is the secret sauce for innovation. And along with adventurous spirit, the entrepreneurship, and the creativity of Hong Kong people, we have created and attracted industries here that have a vested interest in our success. So we have seen the public sector commitment and the investment. And Hong Kong has a unique edge in academia as well. Universities have students and visiting professors from all over the world, faculties who have been trained in the US, Britain, Australia, Hong Kong, the mainland, and elsewhere. These global educators bring in new ideas and the different perspectives. When we have diff differing views, we learn to be open-minded. We listen to each other. We debate each other. I personally have benefited a lot from studying at Hong Kong University and the teaching at the Hong Kong University of Science and the Technology, where we really emphasize the openness. 
And there's a common theme here is openness. Openness and the collaboration are the catalysts for progress. As we come out, hopefully very soon, out of the period of coronavirus pandemic and into economic recovery, that is still very uneven. Questions will arise about whether the trend towards ever greater economic openness. The economic openness has defined the last three decades, you know, whether this openness is going to come to an end. Will protectionism prevail or will we build upon the success of almost the, the entire human history? Can we continue the productivity growth in the global economy through more openness, more open e-commerce, more open commerce and the shared innovation? I take an example in openness for research. The principle of freedom of access by all interested persons to the underlying data processes and to the final papers and the results of the research is of critical importance to the progress of the entire human society. An example for researcher is archive for all the papers. Another example for developers is GitHub for code sharing. For developers, accelerating your workflows and the increasing collaboration are two ways to scale your innovation. The reality is that most of the software nowadays comes from open source, probably over 80%. And that is great. Microsoft has entirely embraced open source movements. Developers are the new kingmakers now armed with the cloud and OSS, the value has shifted from owning the code to being able to iterate very quickly. I'm very happy to say that GitHub is at the center of the development, security and operation tooling ecosystem, and provides a unique platform already leveraged by the biggest actors, including the three main public cloud providers around the world. But none of this is possible without the trust. And there are two aspects to trust as we think about it. First, trusting business model and the mission. At a time when digital, trans uh, digital technology is transforming every industry and every part of our daily life and work, people are more and more looking for a partner whose business interests are fundamentally aligned to their success. And the second, instilling trust in technology. That's why, for example, we believe privacy is so important. That's why Microsoft has end-to-end -end cybersecurity approach to protect our customers. And it's why we believe in responsible AI and ask the tough questions, like not just what computers can do, but why they should do it. Let me show you a simple example by my colleague, Dr. Marco Ribeiro in Microsoft Research Redmond. Let's take a look at this. So this is an example showing in a deep learning algorithm applied to classifying two very simple objects Wolf and Husky. Since Marco graduated from University of Washington, so he did this very fine experiment. If you look at the results of this classification use deep learning algorithms, you might think it actually worked out pretty well because five out of six results are correct. But if you dig into the reason why, as Marco did, then you will feel it's actually problematic. In his model anal analysis, all those pixels that used to do the classification are shown you know, to next you know, right to the original image. Now if you look at the right picture, and then you don't see any shape you know, to human eyes, you know, whether 
you know, it is the dog, it is the wolf, or it is the husky. What the algorithm found is actually if it sees you know, any pixels, like white snow. If you, see white, if you see white snow, then the algorithm says it's a wolf. Otherwise, it says it's a husky. So now you see the problem with this kind of bias in your deep learning model. But beyond bias and the transparency, you know, I must say technology and AI are extraordinary tools which can enhance human capabilities and create a better future for everyone. But if these tools fall into the wrong hands, they can be employed as weapons for massive destruct destruction. So it's imperative for all of us to maintain high standards of integrity and to be mindful how we make use of technology. At the Microsoft, our six principles, fairness, reliability and the safety, privacy and the security, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability guide the cross-disciplinary de developments and the use of AI across our company and now more and more shared by people around the world. So let me finish my presentation by sharing my enthusiasm about the future of Hong Kong and for our developers in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a success story of waves of immigrants. And I was one of them more than 30 years ago. The adventurous spirit, the entrepreneurship, and the creativity of our parents, grandparents, and the generations before them have revolutionized the Hong Kong film, music, food, shipping, and the manufacturing industries. The honesty, integrity, and the reliability brought global credibility to the banking and the financial industries, which is the backbone of our society. Their diligence, forbearance, and the kindness have given us a collective identity. All the sacrifices and the hard work have made it possible for generations to receive an excellent education, which in turn has laid a foundation for the success of the city. Inclusivity has always been the strength of Hong Kong. And what makes Hong Kong amazing is its diversity. This is why every day many people come through Hong Kong to visit, to do business, and many like me fall in love with it and decide to settle and call it home. So with that mindset, that belief that anything is possible, just like all of you, you know, Hong Kong developers, that the people are inherently capable of learning with the spirit of innovation and the perseverance, I want to thank you for joining us today and thank you for being part of the solution, building a better future in Hong Kong and beyond. Thank you. Harry, thank you for your comprehensive sharing on your outlook on where the future of tech is headed and the role of which developers and IT professionals in Hong Kong can play a part in this rapid digital transformation we're all experiencing today. I really appreciate you taking the time. For the next question, please join me to welcome Adeline. Now we have Fujifilm Adeline to share with us their capture and flow OCR service. This service is used by Azure AI and machine learning. Now Adeline, I'll give you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adeline Chong and I'm, I'm from a uh, Fuji firm uh, Business Innovation Hong Kong Limited. So uh, I'm the presenter today for the uh, capture and flow thing beyond the paper. So today I would like to share the um, insight of our company. So we have a, a project that um, called the capture and flows and these have been uh, built with the azure and uh, in partnership with the uh, microsoft first of all why we have uh, why we have this uh, initiation on these uh, capture and flows uh, projects it's because of the market needs so uh, digital transformation is not just an option anymore so it is a 
imperative at this uh, era, especially during these pandemic uh, times. So everyone is uh, sitting home and work, uh, working at home. So for the manual works, it's, uh, it's very difficult for the um, for the users to do the communications and probably they just have to uh, do it um, uh, digitally. So the intelligence automation, including the AI, like the connective service, the machine learning, uh, which uh, has been acquired by the customer incrementally, which uh, increase in resident year and help to disrupt the business. All right. So the right uh, technology is um, having the uh, having the right uh, end to end workflow like the management system uh, BPM or the workflow which um, allow to uh, leverage the data for the analytical usage to have the better understand their customers and create the strategies. So right technology is uh, very important to uh, uh, any any of the company right now. All right, so they can boost their revenue, right? After that, the company would like to go on cloud because uh, like I said just now, which is the digital transformation and also under these pandemic seasons, everyone's have to work from home. So go on cloud will be the main option, which uh, help them to get rid of maintaining the hardware in the office. And also they will require the top notch uh, cloud security, like the Azure security, which help to fulfill the compliance needs. Right. The, but last not uh, last but not least, which is the uh, the empowerment, the communications, and the traceability of everything. So it allowed more customer concentrates and it allowed more collaboration and also mobility, increase the traceability of the tasks and transparency on the digital transformation. So during this digitalization, when it become the mainstream, some of the industries still having the uh, challenge and like the banking and insurance to fully digitalize overnight. So in fact, the paper and digital are often have to be coexist. Somehow they complementing each other. Uh, like they have to combine both online and offline operation. This is still uh, this is due to they have the legacy system, which uh, takes time to modernize or digitalize. They will consider using a plug and play solution which can deploy faster and easier. For example, uh, digitize form by extracting the data, the form which is in, in terms of paper form and input the data into the back end legacy system. This is the shortest and fastest uh, way to do that uh, to digitalize. So the types of the documents that we often meet uh, met from the customer which uh, they inquire. Uh, there are often two types, which is the structured documents and also the semi-structured document. Structured documents which include uh, those application forms and also the bank flyers. So when we have, uh, I mean, we have a uh, lots of banks uh, customers and we realize that uh, most of the banks have more than 40 structured application forms in paper format, even they have done they are digitalized internally. So uh, for example, these, uh, these uh, application forms like the onboarding uh, account uh, from the customer service department. So this paper form cannot be get rid of in the short term. Uh, also the bank flyers like the credit card application forms, the mortgage application forms, they remaining in the paper format. This is the challenge for the banking and also the insurance. And the semi-structured document, which are in uh, like the types mostly we have uh, inquired by the customer, which is uh, invoices, the PO, the purchase order, the quotation. Most of them are in the paper format as well as the bank statement and also the some of the property management like the certificates and all these are the semi-structured documents that always in the paper format which uh, uh, the, the customer has a challenge on extracting the data so currently the internal department will be like extracting the data by manually so there are teams of the uh, colleagues or their staff has to uh, uh, read from the paper and and extract the data one by one. So we have come up this idea and we have uh, developed a platform which called the Capture and Flow. This is a cloud solution 
for this capture and flow, what we inspired from this customer are, and we actually um, done it um, totally on cloud and it has been hosted in the Azure. OK, so we actually use the uh, I mean, we have uh, put the platform on the cloud so that the customer is able to access anywhere because these uh, this platform is managing by the virtual machine. And also we have uh, connect uh, the API integration like the form recognizer and also the pre-built form recognizer as well as the computer visions uh, read API. And we do have the uh, blob uh, storage as well as the Azure uh, SQL. And we we do using the Azure Kubernetes for the machine learning uh, 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 Docker image, all right? So so these are the Azure infrastructure that we are, we, uh, we are using to host, I mean, to host our capture and flow. So other than that, we, have, we do have a self-developed AI algorithm, which um, playing the, the important roles in classified the documents. It uh, this algorithm actually to help to retrieve the best trained model uh, to extracting the data accurately. The the next is the we you, we do use the Azure Form Recognizer. So um, we do have the custom model and also the preview model, and we do train we do train some of the custom model, like for example the. Um, structure forms all right so these are the components that we are using and also um, this help to accelerate the indexing process all right so the next part will be the uh, the next technology will be the image pre-processing so this image pre-processing is a uh, is a self-developed uh, function as well so we we using this function actually is to remove the comb or the block fields on the structure forms because most of the uh, bank flyers and also the uh, insurance forms they do have the comb fields on it so that the customer is able to fill in a block uh, the, the the data block blocks by blocks, but when it comes into the capture, this com field could be the noise. And what we did is we developed a image preprocessing models and to remove these com fields. All right, so we, we will show this in the next demo and I will explain it when it, it has, be, has been done. The final uh, technology that we are adopt in the Capture and Flows platform will be the Azure Cognitive Service, the Read API. So uh, this will have to perform the OCRs and also extract the uh, printed uh, and also the handwritten text from the uploaded documents, including the English and also the uh, traditional Chinese. OK. Um, this is the demo of our uh, Capture and Flows platform of Fujifilm, and it's hosted on the Azure Cloud. All right, so, and this is the login uh, user interface. And af after the login, the current tenant, which is the customer, is able to upload the documents. And what we show in this demo, there are three types of document, which is the first is the invoice, and second will be the MPF schemes, and the third will be the government's uh, WR2 certificate. So during the upload uh, times, the user is able to select the um, type of the documents, like it, which is the invoice and also the uh, certificate or the forms. And now I drag the, uh, the documents one by one to the platform. And during this time, the platform actually is performing the um, operation at the back end. It actually integrating with the Azure Cognitive Service, the Read API, uh, along with the forms recognizer to extract the data. And we do adopt the form recognizer pre-built model as well. So before the system extracting the data, it actually processed through the AI algorithm to retrieve the best trained model and as well as the image pre-processing function to remove the comb field and also reduce the noise. And later I will show the um, forms that have the comb fields which uh, will, has been removed. After this uh, stage of uh, the uh, processing and when the users is able to uh, see the documents and verify the documents and you, you can see the fields has been removed and by this uh, and by this way 
the system is able to extract the data in higher accuracy rate because the confu is uh, no longer a noise uh, to the platform. OK, so once the documents have been verified and it's allowed customers to download the extracted data in CSV format. OK, so it has that. For this capture and flows platform in our future, uh, we will adopt the Power Automate as well. So after the files have been downloaded, we plan to further increase the productivity of the customer by downloading the verified documents on a schedule. And we automate in a business process as well. So this downloaded document will go through a approval through the, the Microsoft Teams. And after that, we will integrate it by input the data into the customer's legacy systems like their ERP systems. So the final uh, steps we're going to do will be archive these files by automatically add it to the, uh, to the SharePoint. So this is our future plan of our capture and flow service by using the Power Auto system. So uh, that's all for my presentation today and thank you so much for uh, for the time and if you have any question uh, please uh, please drop by and I will I will I will answer it. Thank you Adeline. Great thank you so much Adeline for your sharing. For the next tech sharing it is on a hot topic especially for developers and IT folks who are exploring what agile transformation means for them and for their organization. So let's welcome Lorenz, a very experiential Scrum master, to share with us on the common issues of agile transformation and why Azure DevOps with GitHub matters to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hong Kong Local Connection session. My name is Lorenz. I'm going to share a bit uh, how uh, Azure and GitHub can help as a developer for agile transformations. So let me share uh, my screen. So yeah, this session we're going to talk about Azure transformation and why Azure DevOps and GitHub is uh, matters for you guys. So we're going to go through really high level trends. We're going to through some uh, common challenges in Hong Kong. Then we're going to talk about what it means for you guys and why GitHub and Azure DevOps. So more about myself, I was a developer. I starting from SB.NET uh, 1.0 to 4.0. I've been then doing a bit of Java in London. I also do a bit of mobile uh, programming. I've been using uh, mostly Python for now for machine learning and stuff. So I've been a Scrum Master for more than 12 years in Hong Kong and London, from really small startup to large enterprise as well. So now I've been mainly uh, teaching organizations in Hong Kong, banks, insurance, logistics, retail, and even government to uh, HR. So very common uh, in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of my clients uh, asked me to help them to start uh, HR transformation. I got a lot of requests from a lot of the banks and insurance, but the, usually the tricky bit is they are using really legacy sum. They have been uh, using the same system for more than 20 or 30 years. I heard of some of my, of my clients that are still using COBOL. And in Hong Kong, it's uh, primarily driven by financial uh, system. So a lot of the company, they have a really strict policy. One of my clients, I'm trying to arrange for them to do some uh, technical training, but they are not allowed to install anything to their computer for the developers. So I've been arguing with them for very long, so I have to actually order some computer for them to do the technical training. And there's uh, usually a lot of uh, issue with the cloud environment as well. So whenever I start with the client, I will talk about what's the waterfall difference, what difference between waterfall and Scrum. In waterfall, the manager and the tech lead, they will choose the technology for you guys. But for Scrum, we hope the developers whoever actually doing the work will propose and decide what technology to choose. And traditionally, requirement is from someone else, from project manager, from business analysis. But now as a, in a Scrum setting, we hope developers, they can help on the requirement as well. They can propose the requirements and negotiate with the product owner. So previously, automation is optional. You're going to do only one testing at the very end. But for Scrum, we're going to do some testing every single screen or maybe every single day. 
So automation and DevOps, they become the key. And we hope from a Scrum perspective, quality should be built in. It should be part of definitely of done that have your increment on a, either spring basis or even on a daily basis. So there's a major uh, mindset shift for developers. We hope you guys not just uh, order takers. We hope you to be kind of, uh, be proactive and propose technology, propose the requirement as well. So whenever I uh, work with my client, the first step is I will ask them to maybe start with GitHub if they are not already using some kind of uh, Git uh, tools. So the reason why is uh, is a modern version control. I have a horrible story about one of my clients. They've been doing a large scale agile transformation with more than uh, 1,000 uh, IT developers, but they're still using S3N and making it even worse. They're not allowed to share the source code to the vendors. So the internal developers, they will email the source code to the vendor in Guangzhou, and the developers in Guangzhou will email the code back to the developers in Hong Kong. So it's Terrible is a light man, no one can get any job done. So I will always recommend my client to start with GitHub. Usually if you ask the, the management, the CEO, the CTO to adopt some kind of a little technology, they will be very scared. But if it's a part of Microsoft, security is uh, it's easy for them, easy for the compliance, purchasing all the departments, and it's mostly free. So unless you have a little enterprise support, you don't have to pay a, a lot of money. And it's also part of Azure DevOps, so you can link it to the Scrum board, you can link it to the Azure. It's the most popular in the world, so you get a lot of support everywhere in, in different cloud platform. And it also makes the next uh, step doing the CI CD much easier. So once you have the GitHub, the second step is uh, before we jump into CI, I would suggest you to add a lot of uh, automated testing. You can do, the, do that at the unit testing level, add that at the each class, each method. You can do that in the integration testing level, do that at the JSON servers. I would highly recommend that if you have to work with uh, maybe different Swarm team or if you have to work with water quality team. And even the maybe the best team, you can add some automated uh, UI testing, mobile, web, or others. So either you do it manual testing, automated testing, the key mindset shift for the developer is like uh, quality is not just the QA job, it's the whole team job, including developer as well. So everyone is responsible for quality and testing is extremely important. So with uh, enough uh, testing to cover the ground, we can do continuous integration testing. I would say in a modern environment, it's almost become a must have because the client will be making a lot of changes. Paul the owner may change his or her mind. So if we use a uh, Azure DevOps or GitHub Marketplace, it can be set up in minutes. You can also choose to build your own. A lot of my clients, they due to some kind of compliance, they cannot use any cloud service. You can use build your own Jenkins, but my experience is uh, developers very often, even my best developers, they have to spend maybe three months or four months to set up the whole pipeline. But if you are using the GitHub at the beginning, then you have a lot of market pace, usually just a five minutes and you can set up everything. So it's also multi-cloud uh, ready. You can uh, use it with uh, AWS, you can use it with other platform as well. And once we have a CI, then let's like say we can do the cons deployment to maybe to uh, real life assures or different environments. So the key is again, automate your build and deploy. As we mentioned in the Scrum setting, very often you will not just uh, build once, you will build many, many times, even during one day. So if it's a uh, manual, if there's a required effort, the things will be difficult. So we suggest you to automate the build and deploy. Assure us our DevOps uh, will support Windows, Mac, and Linux, so that makes the job easier for you. And it supports for all the language. Previously, I was using a .NET C Sharp, then move it to Objective C. The whole uh, deck will also cover possible to maybe deploy the mobile applications, maybe to Hockey app and to other uh, platform. So it supports uh, any cloud you want, even your company uh, using uh, maybe multi cloud strategy or using uh, AWS. With uh, GitHub or Azure DevOps, you can still connect to everything. 
again, it's a fee for uh, open source. It's a really cheap for the team as well. So again, code quality is uh, extremely important. Whenever I work as a developer, I'm really worried maybe other developer can screw up my code. So you can, you should do manual code review, but usually manual code review will have a limitations. For example, if you have a team of uh, live developers with only one or two CN developers, those one or two will struggle to maybe do code review for everyone. So if with many code review, I suggest you to set up some pairs like uh, for everyone to do the code review and also set up some kind of automated code review as well. Because like there just are uh, a lot of code changes, it's impossible for a human to keep track of all the changes. So GitHub and Azure DevOps they provide integration with SonarCube. SonarCube is our wide recommendation uh, with regards to the code quality. I'm still struggling to find other tools that's as good as our Sonar Kit. So in Sonar Kit, you can customize your coding style, you can customize the coding standard according to your team standard or company standard. So it works well for all the language. And if uh, maybe there's a major issue, major uh, uh, coding style, you can also trigger some message. So security is also extremely important as well. So in Scrum, we hope security is something you already plan at the beginning and you don't ignore until the very last. So we hope you to do more frequent penetration testing, not just uh, do very end. Maybe even not ideal situation, can you do that? Maybe once you set up uh, maybe three or four screen. And ideally, it should be ideal as your definition of done. You should maybe do it every single screen. So we believe security should be the first class citizen in Scrum. It should uh, have embed security. So with GitHub as uh, one option, there's already some kind of building security. For example, they you are not allowed to use a username password to access a code in the future. You should be using a token. That's a building security in the future. And it integrates nicely with the pipeline so you don't have to worry about any of them. And very often my client will, they will ask me what kind of tool I should be using for the Scrum uh, planning. One of the major tools is a Jira, but personally I'm not a big fan of Jira because uh, that's a lot of, uh, from issue tracking and there's a lot of uh, problem. So very often I would suggest a sure DevOps uh, for my client. Usually they have low ideas of Scrum ready, but we have been talking to Azure DevOps uh, very often as a Scrum trainer, so they take a lot of idea to change it more to a uh, Scrum-like. So you can do everything in there. So from initial, you have some idea, then do some code thing. It's also integrated with GitHub. You can also link it to CI, CD, and release. So we can check and broadcast any changes or any update on the task. So for example, if any one product owner developers change the detail of some product ballot items, the change will be broadcast to everyone on Slack or the other channels. So it works well for remote or hybrid situation. Very often I will ask my client to maybe start with some uh, policy or some physical board, but in the COVID situation, it's not possible. And we also have the chat of uh, we mentioned briefly. So I will highly recommend you integrate your Scrum tools, either Azure DevOps or Jira with either Slack or Teams. So that way we have a more transparency. If anyone pick up any task, everyone will know. Everyone change, if anyone change the details, everyone will know. So it helps to sync up um, if you have uh, people from different location, if you work from home, if people from different time zone. So the integration, you can also link it to many, many tools. You can link it to your favorite, maybe a uh, testing framework, think, link it to your favorite tools to maybe uh, test the code. So a uh, quick summary, we talk about uh, pretty much all the industry that are going through some kind of uh, transformations. So the common challenges are uh, there's a lot of legacy sum. If you still work with legacy sum, it's in general very difficult to deliver quickly. And that's what all the business are. And that involves some uh, major mindset change from the developers. So previously, developers, we just take orders from someone from the tally, from the autumn BA, or from the PM and just do it. Now in a Scrum or Azure environments, 
we hope the developers to be more proactive. They speak up their mind. If they think uh, there's a better way to do it, they should propose and do it immediately. So they should also decide what the tools to use. So we suggest you to always start with uh, GitHub. So with GitHub, uh, all the integration is easy. And it's usually quite easy to save it to management because it's Microsoft, it's safe. So also with our GitHub, it's very easy to link it to CI and CD. You can set up the code review automator or manual there. You can have the built-in security, and you can also link it to chat ops, link it to Slack, link it to Microsoft Teams, whatever your favorite uh, messages. And we can do the scrum panning uh, in the in the Azure DevOps as well. You can put your product backlog, you can put your spin backlog, we can update the status for everyone. So in general, it will increase the quality for you guys. So you can always set up your own CI deck, you can set up your code review decks on the kit and everything. Everything is open source, it's possible, but in general, it will take a lot of the time. Previously, even my best developer, it would take him like three or four months to set up the Jenkins set. So with uh, Azure DevOps and GitHub, it only take a few minutes if you do it uh, the standard workflow. And also we work well for remote team. So we love to talk face to face, but the COVID situation is uh, not going to go away anytime soon. We have to work from our home or work from our remote location. So, so Azure DevOps will help. And how to get started, you can start with GitHub. It's free with public and private response training. I would suggest you to try out Azure DevOps. Like right hand side, I can just you can start with the bot. You can just uh, start with your team. You can study online. And the last, I will recommend you to talk to your friends, talk to your teammates, talk to your manager to convince them to maybe try out a bit using GitHub and Azure DevOps. Okay, that's all for the sharing. Thank you so much, Lorenz. Great high level on the summary on the patterns, the practices, the toolings that brings out the full DevOps capabilities with Azure and GitHub. If you wish to learn more, deep dive on how you can drive developer velocity with Microsoft's end-to-end -end developer stack, you better check out some of the breakout sessions at Build today and tomorrow. On top of Build sessions, you can also refer to the quick starter guide that I'm showing right now with all the free resources you can access to learn about Azure DevOps with GitHub. All right, so let's move on to the final session of our local connection today, which is on a quick summary on the skilling resources and programs available for you guys. Microsoft <laughs> 如果你想hands-on少少,有系統地學習怎樣應用我們的product,你可以上Microsoft Learn,上面有不同的learning pathway,你可以跟著它看片做等等的。如果你學完之後,想挑戰一下自己,做攞一個專業的認證,我們還有一些考試是以 so moving to virtual training sessions for Hong Kong developers out there, if you are looking to certify yourself, you better not miss out the upcoming virtual training days we offer for Azure. Since the start of this year in January, we have released new fundamental training topics on AI and data fundamental, where AI 900 and DP 900, we are offering free exam vouchers if you successfully attend all the sessions. So don't miss us out. Okay, so Hong Kong MVP program. So for those of you guys who have never heard about MVP, it stands for Microsoft Valued Professional, where we recognize passionate individuals in Hong Kong who share their technical knowledge and expertise with local communities. So if you actually refer to the slide, it's very easy to become a Hong Kong Microsoft MVP if you are an existing brand ambassador or a thought leader of Microsoft technology and services. If you have been an existing content creator via videos, tutorial, blogs, LinkedIn posts, that's even a plus. 
And also, um, if you have been an active uh, speaker at meetup events to talk about Microsoft products, um, that's definitely another addition to on how you could become a Microsoft MVP. The benefits, of course, um, there's a lot, but to mention a few, uh, some of them is that you could give direct product feedback to our engineering teams at headquarters and also connect with our product marketing teams on a quarterly basis. And there's speaking opportunities at Microsoft led events. Uh, there will be tools, access, and free subscriptions that will be given to our MVPs. And last but not the least, which is the best highlight of all, is you would be able to connect with a global network of MVPs around the world through the annual MVP summit. Um, it is unfortunate that COVID, there is a virtual, you know, summit happening since last year, but, you know, once we're um, out of COVID, hopefully there will be in-person summits that will happen moving forward. So stay tuned for that. And we look forward to your applications. If you have any further additional inquiries about MVP, please email the below uh, email address we've included at the bottom of this slide. So with that, we would like to wrap up our session and we hope you enjoyed today's community connection and thank you to all the speakers who have joined us today. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the build session today and tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the build session today and tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the build session today and tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the build session today and tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye.